Story Chat with John Fornoff, the art and passion of storytelling. Here's your host, Brian Bullabush. Hi, I'm John, obviously, and uh, this is Story Chat. And we're in South Georgia. This is um, my last day before leaving back to uh, Colorado and California. But uh, it's been an amazing time here. And uh, we've been on set uh, working on a... uh, on a, on a movie I got to write, working with an amazing team, working with students, I got to work with students and just amazing things are happening here in South Georgia. This is Lake Quitman, Georgia, which is halfway between Valdosta and Thomasville, just north of Tallahassee. And uh, it's amazing things are happening in this little town. And I've got two people that are making amazing things happen here. Uh, Doors are opening up for a studio. All kinds of, we're going to talk about that. But I want to introduce you to two wonderful friends of mine. And here they are. Da, 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 da. Okay. Hi. Here's Honey Korngold. Hello. And here's Kathy Parker. Hello. All right. All right. Now, Honey, tell, tell, tell us a little bit about you. And Kathy, tell us a little bit about you. Let's, let's, let's yeah. Start. Okay. So um, have been in production for a number of years. Started mm-hmm. out in nonfiction production, doing things like travel TV shows and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, and as time went on, as and we started kind of growing the company, we started thinking we need to start looking for some narrative things to to develop and yeah. produce. And it was, you know, we we're praying about it. And just about that time, uh, Kathy Parker came onto my radar through a mutual friend, and uh, she has an amazing story that I'll let her tell you about. Yes. But when yeah. I heard it, I said, Oh my. <laughs> that, that would make an amazing movie. Mm-hmm. So since then, um, there's a beautiful script written by our mutual dear friend, Brian Bird. Yep. Um, and, and he's with uh, what calls the heart, right? He is. Okay. Glenn right. calls the heart. Yep. Um, and uh, it's just a beautiful story, but I don't want to take any thunder away from Kathy. But that's, where, that's how we met. That's and cool. um, in the process of developing this beautiful movie, Northern Lights, um, we've come to realize that we have a lot of shared values and mm-hmm. mutual passions and, and convictions for things that can make the world a better place. Mm. And a lot of it's revolving around production and about storytelling. Mm-hmm. So um, that's how we intersected. And we've been working together now for several years and it's been a joy. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. And Kathy, tell us, tell us about okay. you. Well, and the then, story to get us to the point where I met Hani, uh-huh. so my husband was coaching football and my children were all playing. I have four children. All of them were mm-hmm. great athletes, just like their dad. Yeah. And um, we were living in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm-hmm. And ESPN did a special uh, outside the lines on a community in the most northern part of the United States in Barrow, Alaska. Mm-hmm. Very re- remote, isolated area. No roads going in or, in or out. And tough, uh, but they were having a lot of problems with keeping their youth um, in school. Hmm. And they implemented a, a program that was funded by the state. And when they did a survey and asked the kids, what would keep you in school? The kids said, well, if we had a football program, we would, we would come to school. Uh-huh. And um, it was extremely controversial because of uh, the money it was going to cost. They would have to fly to play every opponent and football had never been played north of the Arctic Circle, and this was two, 340 miles north of the Arctic Circle, so wow, wow. It, was, um, it was problematic. No grass grows there. It's on the frozen tundra, <laughs> but they started this football program, and it was the coolest thing to watch this, this special, and I said to my husband, I said, that, that program, that football program is going to save the lives of those young men, mm. and he said, yeah, you're right, and um just so happened that um, Carl was overseeing putting in an artificial turf field in our area in Florida. And that day, the Lord just spoke to me. It was, you know, how much more do those kids in Alaska, where they can't even grow grass on that frozen tundra, how much more do they need that than, wow. than you do and your kids and your yeah. community? So I was in sales at the time and I started what I thought would be a really easy campaign and <laughs> would go to yeah. some, some big hitters uh, like uh, sporting companies like uh, Nike or Under mm-hmm. Armour and give them to write a check. And of course that never happens like we planned, but <laughs> yeah. it got a, um, it had, the story hit the Associated Press and, and it became a national story and, mm-hmm. and it did happen. God did it. And um within six months of making the announcement in Florida, a new turf field was um, provided for that community installed and they played their first game of the season 
on that field surrounded by national media and it changed our lives and it changed their lives and that community will never be the same Mm. but with that story getting the um, exposure that it did I immediately had producers calling wanting to tell the story and and uh, I I was still living in the story. I couldn't tell the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. uh, But I I did understand that when the story was told, I wanted to make sure that the people who trusted me uh, were honored and they were portrayed in the correct fashion. And so that was very concerning to me. And when I would ask questions like, you know, what do I have authority? Do I have any say so? Mm -hmm. And what the script and how the story is told? And pretty much it was no. (laughs) <laughs> mm. and so years went on and and um and I started believing well I would talk about it to anybody mm-hmm. that would and I would do a lot of civic group organizations speaking at their events and, and churches and you know it's a wonderful story and mm-hmm. it gives people so much hope and, mm. and I continue to do that but as far as going any further with a with a with a movie or with a book it just hit a lot of a lot of dead ends and mm. uh until the day that i agreed to take a phone call yeah. from a lady yes. uh, named honey Corgold. there you go and okay. i took the call and when she answered the phone and said i was just praying and thanking god for always sending me the right stories at the right time i thought oh but this one sounds a little different <laughs> this may be a different situation yeah. and it was yeah. and so we started working together mm-hmm. And um, I moved back to to South Georgia, where I was from. Mm -hmm. And and I'll I'll never forget asking her. um, We had, my husband was coaching in a a particular county where they had lost out on an opportunity. Disney had come through wanting to film Dumbo. Mm -hmm. And they lost out on the opportunity because they didn't have the infrastructure they needed when it was Okay, what are your what are your permits look like? You know, yeah. and they lost out on that opportunity. And the county administrator came to me and said, "Well, you know about film. Uh, <laughs> can you help us? And we don't want to lose out on another opportunity." And I was like, uh-huh. "I really don't know about uh-huh. film, but uh-huh. I know somebody who does." Yeah. And so when I made the call to Hani, I remember I was nervous about it. To mm-hmm. be quite honest, John, because you know you think your baby's pretty, but you don't know if somebody else thinks your baby's pretty. <laughs> and really I was like. That, yeah. If she's going to go, I'm not coming to South Georgia. It's 100 degrees there uh-huh. in the summer. You know, uh-huh. I didn't know what she might say. Uh-huh. And, um, but when I called her and I said, hey, you know, have you ever considered coming to South Georgia? And she was like, absolutely. Mm. You know, I've been praying and thinking about that and mm-hmm. would love to have a presence. And wow. so that's how it began wow. with looking at, okay, what can we do to bring production to South Georgia, you know, a state wow. that's already very much committed uh, mm-hmm. to making it happen, but why not South Georgia? And then I had worked in nonprofit work in yeah. South Georgia for several years with Boys and Girls Club, and and they were looking at opportunities for their youth, so it was the perfect yeah. combination of all to we can give this opportunity to the youth that we serve. That's amazing. You came, so you're you're a producer in California and Colorado, mm-hmm. and then you came you came here yeah. to South Georgia, which you don't normally think like okay, you think of you know places where film was produced, not not here. Why yeah. why here? What yeah. for you? What, well, what, thank you, you for sharing that story. It's you wonderful. Know, Georgia's leading the country in film production, like it's the number one film yeah. producing state. I didn't it know is. that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And um, several years ago, the state decided that they want to wanted to incentivize film. Mm -hmm. And so they put into place a very generous tax incentive, Mm -hmm. uh, which is 30%. Wow. That's a big deal. You Mm -hmm. know, 30 cents on the dollar is a really big deal. Yeah. So that's why there's so much production here. And there's so many sound stages being built and Mm -hmm. it's just booming. Um, But it's mostly concentrated in the Atlanta metro area, a little bit in Savannah. Um, But that's, over three hours from here. Mm-hmm. There's nothing down here as far mm-hmm. as sound stages. Yeah. There's a lot of um, production going on location wise now because as you see, it's so beautiful here. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've got these gorgeous historic homes and buildings and streets and you know the moss in, in the trees. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's just beautiful. So it's been discovered clearly, but when productions wanna do anything on a sound stage or do anything post-production wise, they have to leave. They go back to Atlanta, they go back to LA, New York, 
So as we had been here for a while, thinking clearly we would produce some of our own things here um, as a production company, it became really obvious to us that there was a very substantial need mm -hmm. and bringing production to this part mm -hmm. of the state would be fantastic for the community, economically, mm -hmm. educationally, um, all of the above. And it's affordable. So when you start thinking about purchasing lots of property and acreage and all the things that's required for mm -hmm. a studio and back lots and all of that, it's here wow. and it's affordable. Wow. Um, not to mention that people are just really welcoming. Yes. They're, um, they care about their communities. Um, it just was the perfect, the perfect fit. So that's why we ended up where we are. And of course, it helps that there's a beautiful little regional airport that mm -hmm. Delta services every day and mm -hmm. there's local hotels and all of those things. So it's 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 really the perfect the perfect little mix. And you, you found uh, you found a, um, a building and how many square feet we're talking about? Uh, it's about 50,000. OK, 50,000 square feet um, broken out into sound stages and then also an old historic building that we're renovating for post production. We're gonna have a 90 seat screening theater, um, makeup, ADR, Foley, all the things that are involved in, in actually bringing that final piece of the production together. And then you've got, uh, this, which is amazing. So you've, you've got, already got the building, mm -hmm. you've got the building for the sound stages, you've got, you've yes. got, the, you've got the office area. Yeah. Um, like, this is amazing what's gonna happen here. And I, what, what's the time frame? What's, what are you looking at? 2023. We've wow. already got the plans, the architectural yeah. and the construction. In fact, we just met yesterday going over the final mm -hmm. details, but we wanna have the sound stages up and running in 2023. Is and then the post-production yeah. and all that will will follow in that historic building yeah. um, after that. But you know, right now there's a, almost a two year waiting list for soundstage space in this state and wow. so we'll be the only game in town for within hundreds of miles. Wow. So we've already got a, a, a list of people that want to come and use the facilities. That's amazing. So a part of this too, a unique aspect is that you've got an academy associated with this. So you're mm -hmm. going to be not only that you have the sound stages, but you've got an academy where you're teaching and, right. and working. Tell us about that. Tell us mm -hmm. about the academy. That's very important to yeah, us yeah. because um, we, especially in, in a small community like the one that we're in, um, we need to have opportunities for our youth. We mm -hmm. need to have opportunities for um, what they can do, what they can enjoy. They don't have to leave here to be able to have their careers, to be able to provide for their families. Mm -hmm. um, so being able to train them and show them this craft and we've seen this is our second year in just finishing up mm -hmm. uh, a film camp during the summer is that they're extremely qualified. We have some that just finished that will go on and work in production right away. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that Honey has, especially because she's worked with crews all over. Um, she sees a lot of things that make this, the youth from this area quite intriguing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're very different. You know, when you, um, <laughs> When you grow up in a rural community, you're just wired differently. Yes. You know, uh -huh. These young people grow up working on farms. And I mean, they're just a whole different um, orientation to you know, their lives. Mm -hmm. And it really became clear to me last summer about how different the crews that are going to grow up out of this area, how different and how special they're going to be. Mm. Not only are, will people be attracted to the area because of the obvious, the, the tax incentive and yeah. the beautiful shooting locations, but they'll be attracted because of the crews. Yeah. And we saw that last summer at one of our film camps to where um, they had- uh, the Gatorade, sorry. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, they yes, had, yes, they yeah. had like, um, they got a steady cam that they yeah. really wanted to use. And sadly, the, the brace didn't come with it um, from the rental company, but they were, bound and determined they were going to make this work uh -huh. and so that's a heavy rig mm -hmm. you can't just you can't just muscle this you've got to have the support mm -hmm. and so they weren't going to take no for an answer and so they started thinking okay well let's use this let's use this pole and one of the other kids said well I was going to go gator hunt later and I've got some rope in the back of my truck <laughs> and we can rig that this way and that way to stabilize it 
And I just thought to myself, now that's a phrase that you hear from no film crew in LA or <laughs> ever. You know? So they're just resourceful. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. very resourceful. They're, yeah. they're, the ingenuity, mm-hmm. the work ethic, because yes. they, there well, isn't anybody to call. When, you, when you're you out, on, out. On, the you farm. Yeah, out on the farm, you have to figure it out. And you've seen it. You've been yes. working with these young yes. people this summer. Yeah. And it's been hot. Oh, yes. We've had some hot days. Oh, yeah. And there's no complaining. Yep. There's no grumbling. There's no, this isn't what I signed up for. Mm -hmm. They just are a delight. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be the secret ingredient down here in South Georgia for production. That's, that's, I love that. And I've got to work with you since I've I've been out there, you know, so I got to teach for, um, got to teach for a week here with the, with the students. And then we went out and we had like, a, an amazing film crew and then we've got students that are interning apprenticing with it and um and by the way I was just thinking it's interesting how God prepared your heart for that like what happened in Alaska you know you yeah. can see the parallels here it's mm-hmm. like you, you saw the like this small town it, it, they needed uh what, what it was going to take for, for kids to say it's like so many yeah. parallels here right. how God's preparing exactly. you for this yeah mm-hmm. Yeah. This is, yeah, and the yeah. film camp is really um, for us. You know, we know that with the studio and sound stages coming, um, and the film academy, um, the film academy will actually be in conjunction with the state of Georgia. They have a program mm. called the Georgia Film Academy, mm-hmm. and it is extraordinary. In their infinite wisdom, they decided once production was really going that they needed to build. The workforce here yeah. Yeah. They quickly, needed, yes. quickly. Yeah, yeah. and so they partnered with all the universities and technical colleges in the state and they have this amazing curriculum that they have put into mm-hmm. um into the into the schools that basically equip the um the students and it's not just young people there's mid-career people yeah. there's mm-hmm. you know 50 year olds that are deciding oh i've been an electrician or i've been an interior designer now i want to go work in film Mm -hmm. and they can go through the program wow so it's it's three semesters and the first semester you basically learn everything you need to know about set etiquette you Mm -hmm. learn all the jobs on a set the second semester you pick your specialty Mm -hmm. oh i want to go into i'm interested in uh you know being a gaffer or i'm Mm -hmm. interested in production design or you, you work in your specialty that next semester. And then the third semester, the Georgia Film Office gets you on a working union production and it's a paid internship. Wow, <laughs> that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. You want to talk that's about amazing. a best kept secret. Yeah. I mean, it's getting a lot more, you know, uh, it, it's growing, but we're going to have that program here yeah. in South Georgia. Wow. So we'll be working in conjunction with Bud Austin State and the other technical colleges in the area mm-hmm. to partner to be that training arm mm-hmm. of the Georgia Film Academy because they'll be working production wow. down here. So it's an amazing program. I mean, it is it is equipping future filmmakers in a huge way. It's yeah. pretty much um, mostly below the line. Mm-hmm. So every, you know, 90% of what happens on a set, mm-hmm. um, they're training and equipping and doing it in an incredible way. Wow. And it's affordable. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Even without student aid, I think it's like seven hundred and fifty dollars oh, per wow. semester. Wow! You know? Wow! This can is, you yeah. imagine in three semesters walking onto a set and and making you know even entry level is a thousand dollars a week for a young person in an area like this, or even a, a person that's changing careers? Yeah. What a path! Wow! What what that's a wonderful path! Phenomenal. Wow! And you're bringing that here to Quitman. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. To wow. to a rural community that. Um, that could use that economic boost Mm -hmm. and the young people and mid-career people too can they have a whole new world open to them this is just phenomenal so i've I've, we're doing this right now on a small scale you're doing it like just and you're going to scale up so we we did um you asked me to come down here to to teach and all that and we work with with the film and i've got a little a a little clip and this is we're doing audio and video here so for audio people kind of talk about what's going on but i've got the clip of 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 um at the barn yeah so um this uh it's a story about it's called the buick special and it's a story about um this kid this teenage kid who uh, has a writing assignment to um 
to go to the old folks home, get a story and then come back and report it to his English class. And he doesn't want to do it. And he gets there at the retirement home and he meets this grumpy old guy that doesn't want to be interviewed. But they connect because this, this old man, Mr. G, has this old car, a 52 Buick Special. And it's locked away in a barn. It has to be started now and then. And he can't get anybody to do it for him, probably because he's grumpy. And so he uses Jake to start the car. Jake uses him to get the story. And they connect over this car. So he tells Jake, don't take it out. for Don't drive it. You know, uh, but uh, Jake really realizes the car needs to get out, sort of like Mr. Jake needs to be get out of his, his old folks home, his old mentality. So anyway, this is the this is we, I've got a little clip here of when he, quote unquote, rescues the car. And I, I'm going to share it with you here. We haven't done this. is The first time we're doing this in story chat. We haven't shared the screen before. We're going to go ahead and do this in here. I think we can do that. OK, cool. And we can talk about go ahead and you can talk about whatever you want to talk about on the. Uh, share sound there and and i just want to plug that was filmed at a um, peanut <coughs> processing plant and <laughs> yes. it goes right along with our new slogan which honey share our slogan which is peanuts in production <laughs> <laughs> that's what george is about i love it so it was perfect but it yeah, was at the peanut processing plant where that's we great. filmed this we've got a lot of peas going on here yep all right, so you can see in this in this video we're doing it for audio folks too. There's there's you, you can see there's a barn on the right, a barn doors are on the right, and we're we're looking at it um, in a way that you can see the barn doors open, but you can't see what's inside. And it's about something, and you can see a little peak, a little something on the right, just a little bit of a bumper. And so, um, now, everybody, settle, stand by, camera. David Bain, and these are our first AD. And we've got, um, we have, we've got, we also have Steve we have Wilson, who's our slate guy. And you'll see Wilson's name. Right. Wilson, right on our students. And there's our director, Leia. There's our director, director on the ground. With, yes. Shot the we have two, two cameras going with <laughs> Levi. Take two. Okay. And so now. And action. Oh, wow. Beautiful product. This is the special. But would you call that yeah yeah yeah, it's yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> and there's, there's, there's the real star the groups are behind it pushing the car okay, because yeah, it was priceless in that our main actor did not have a driver he didn't, he didn't know how, so we got uh, it's we like, like oh the by the way when well, we already <laughs> already already uh you know auditioned and got him he said oh by the way i don't drive it's like uh, we got a little problem because <laughs> it's about the car and you're yeah. driving the car. So anyway, go ahead. Sorry. So we yeah, had, yeah, so yeah, we had it. We had a push team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it worked. It worked. It, it worked. And it worked. and and uh, Marcus is up there. He's playing Jake. He's up there just driving it like it like he normally would. So wow. He did a phenomenal job. He sure did. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you? Um, I've never run into um, friends like you that have such vision and you're making it happen. And it's like phenomenal things like doors are, I know you've gone through a lot of challenges to get, get this going, but what's, what's the secret here? What's the secret of just, I mean, amazing favor here, doors opening up, sound stages, you've got, you, you're dreaming big, thinking big, and God's right there encouraging you in favor. What's, what's, what's the well, secret I of all this? it all revolves around our faith and what mm -hmm. God has called us to do. Uh, one of the things I think was a turning point for me because um, not everybody has been favorable. We've, we've yeah. run up a whole lot of it, objection um, that was very heartbreaking to us, mm. you know, because- You would think they're maybe on board. Yeah, you would right? think, yeah, you, you would think. think. Yeah. And, uh, and some that you were more close to, you know, and thought mm. were friends that, you know, just didn't like you weren't doing it quick enough or something, you know, just all kinds of reasons. But um, John Maxwell, I, I just did a, a series on one of his books, um, Developing the Leader Within You 2.0. And he made a statement and it was one of those that I circled and underlined uh -huh. and highlighted. And it was, he said, you, you would think, most people think that big vision unites people. Mm -hmm. He said, but I'm here to tell you that it does not. It mm -hmm. divides those who wow. will from those who will not. Hmm. And when I accepted that, that no, uh, we're not going to have everybody on board, mm -hmm. but God will give us the ones that we need. Yeah. And we, we need to steward those well and be obedient. 
And, but when I could really come to grips with that, that not everybody's going to be cheering for us. Mm -hmm. um, some will come around, some may never come around. Yeah. Um, when I was able to get, come to grips with that mm -hmm. and be okay with it, Lord, this is what you said. And I have to go back and look a lot, you know, in my journal, it's been like, okay, Lord, what did you say? Mm -hmm. And, and the waiting, it, those are all things we, that aren't fun. Yeah. You know, when it doesn't happen exactly like, like you think, but we are very committed to, um, to going forward and doing what the Lord has shown us to do. Mm. And yeah, we do dream big. And I love how you dream big. My goodness. So yeah. how do you want to add? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's like my, the, the running joke is I feel like we've come to this small town, you know, in Georgia and told everybody, we've come to town, we're building a spaceship and we're going to Mars. You know, because <laughs> it's coming to yes. a rural community and saying we're building a film studio uh -huh. is just as foreign yes. to them. Yes. They're starting to understand now. And now that they've seen the streets blocked off by the police and production going on, you yes. see the little groups gathering on the corners, they get to see it. They get to understand yes. it um it's really helpful in mm. that regard um but i think for us you know we we see what's happening in the world with media and storytelling mm -hmm. we see the direction that story is going to being less and less redemptive mm. uh you know we we live in a world that's hurting right now and we need stories that um point us in the right direction that build us up don't tear us down and i'm not saying they all have to be perfect and happy and sweet but mm. stories where people overcome yeah where people have yeah. hard hard things happen and and maybe make hard choices or bad choices and how they come out of those and you know we need those stories and so um you know our hope and our desire is that this would be a place where storytellers that want to tell those kind of stories flock to yeah because mm, they find yeah. kindred spirits down yes. here like yeah. yes these are the kinds of stories that need to be told we want to support these kinds of stories so that's that's our desire mm -hmm. and i think um a, a lot of it um as far as the learning process has come from and we've talked about this a little bit is in the not striving mm -hmm. doesn't mean that we don't work hard yes. doesn't yeah. mean that it's not craziness on a daily basis <laughs> yeah. but when we start trying to shove the square peg in the round hole we know we're not mm -hmm. we're not going down the right road yeah yeah we know that that that's not god's yeah. plan yeah to strive and that right you know coming from a faith perspective if god's not in it we're we're, we're not mm -hmm. it ain't gonna happen for us so and I, and I know that that's hard for for folks to understand you know that 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 faith is such a big part of the business side of what we do, but it is. Mm -hmm. And particularly because these are big, audacious, mm -hmm. crazy goals and visions. Far bigger and, than what we could do on our own. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. What mm -hmm. just when I've been here, just just over the month I've been here, just I've been seeing like major doors open for you all. And I'm just like, I remember you saying, you know, this building will be nice. And then like with within a couple of weeks, you you have that yeah. building. It's yeah. like for production. It's like Wow, and I saw the um, the uh, grocery warehouse at uh, the fifty thousand square feet. I saw that that building, and you're you're converting that. It's going to be an up and going next year, and you've got big plans uh, for the future. Okay. And so I heard the word flourish. I didn't say the way, but it's it's a place that, that that people can flock to, but also I think flourish here. Just that yeah. there's a place that mm -hmm. they can they can put down some roots. There's some good values mm -hmm. here. We're talking about redemptive media. Yeah. Um, what would you say just as we close out here? What would you say to people? Uh, I've got you know, writers, storytellers, creative people watching and, and listening. What would you say to encourage them in, in what they're doing and going for their dreams? What would you What would you say? Well, we were very much encouraged. Uh, we had the opportunity to um, go to Trilla Studios and uh, sit with Dan Kathy. Mm. And the founder he, of Chick Fil A, right? I'm mean, those guys, yeah, Chick Fil A, right? Yeah. They've got a, the big studios in Atlanta. I'm sorry, yes, I've yes, got so that's the largest okay. studio in North America outside of Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. Wow, <laughs> yeah, wow, and, 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 and it's everything. getting bigger and a lot bigger and a lot bigger. And but he took time out of his day and brought all his team in to help us. Oh, and um, so seeing that, seeing that, um, this is not this is for us to share you know, mm. and to encourage, and that's what we're about. So yes, we want to encourage those who God has given the vision of the dream. Mm -hmm. It might not, it might be here with us mm -hmm. or it might be <laughs> somewhere else, you know. You see how they work, yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> um, 
but it, it, we're all a part of that same that same almost like a ministry right? mm-hmm. we're, we're going after that same mountain mm-hmm. of influence that mountain mm-hmm. of arts and entertainment mm-hmm. and media and so yes we want to encourage others we want to just like we were encouraged by van kathy mm-hmm. and him giving us everything that he right. had and yeah. said you know you and we took our architects and our builders our contractors up to to look and to see with their oh, own eyes wow. so that they would know how to design for us yeah yeah and um and i look forward to the day and i know you do too when they come here oh. and we're able to say this is how you do it and what can we do to help you Oh. and so it's a big kingdom yeah and mm-hmm. we're all in it together mm-hmm. and it doesn't really Thank matter you. where you are if you're a writer if you're a producer you know the world has changed mm-hmm. i mean when i you know i had offices in west hollywood my husband mm-hmm. and i lived in southern california is where we're from the day that i decided to not have a presence in l.a I never thought I would see that day. I never thought I would be able to leave California if I was going to pursue production and all the things that we wanted to do. You know, I never imagined that day would come, but the world has changed Mm -hmm. dramatically. Mm -hmm. And so you can do and pursue from wherever you are. Mm -hmm. If you're in Wisconsin, if Mm -hmm. you're in New Hampshire, if Mm -hmm. you're in Florida, if you're in California, Oregon, it doesn't Mm -hmm. matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just pursue, work your craft, get, be the best that you can possibly be. Um, and, and it'll come, the mm-hmm. relationships will come and you will end up where you need to be with your community. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. That's um, beautiful. So wow. be open because it's not always where you think it is. Mm-hmm. I've mm-hmm. learned that for sure. Now, my husband and I, you know, spent our whole lives in Southern California and a little bit in Colorado and we call when Georgia she, home. When she wow. got her Georgia wow. uh, driver's license, she was like, look at this. I never thought I'd have a Georgia. I'm, I'm a resident of Georgia. I know. <laughs> I know. We it thought, kind of reality hit when you got the yeah, license. We yeah, thought yeah. we split our time and bounced back and forth between California, Colorado, mm-hmm. all that. And not anymore. Mm-hmm. We're all in, in Georgia because it's it's where we need to be. Wow. So be wow. open. That's the advice I would give anyone. Be open and don't... Um, don't feel like there's only one way or one place or one community because everything's blown wide open right now. Wow. That's, a, that's just amazing. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. And, thank uh, you, John. It's inspiring. And thank yeah. you for being here. Well, yes, I got to think uh, this, the, this beautiful, beautiful place here on, on Screven Street. And uh, they, they took this, this, um, so that's our 120 years old. 120 year old house, and it was like stacked with boxes, and mm-hmm. and they a restored job. it. Re, re, you can see in the background just some of the stuff they've done, just, just accessories and stuff, and they just restored this place. And that's kind of it a is, metaphor for what you're doing. That's right. Yeah. Everything, everything God gives us, mm-hmm. we want to redeem. Wow, mm-hmm. that's beautiful. Thank you so much for being. Thank you for what you're doing. And I just, just bless what you're doing. Just, just thank you for I'm watching those students. Just, I watch some, those dreams come alive. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, when you see that, it just does something for you. Yeah. When you absolutely. see that. Yeah. And so. thank you for sowing into them. They love you. Oh, yeah. I, the oh, connections oh. that, that they made with you. I mean, I saw that and it just was so oh. powerful. Yeah. That touches so my heart. They, oh, it, it goes both. Yeah. yeah. The blessings go. It's like, bing, bing, bing. it just blesses both yeah. at the same time. Yeah. They bless me oh. so much. Just, just. Yeah. The things they would just come up and say, it's like, my goodness. And just from their heart, yeah. these teenagers, you know, how they, you know, know. it's like, yeah. and just that really just meant the world to me. Cause I, I want to, that's part of my passion with yeah. you, with you all just sowing in that yes. next generation. Yeah. yeah. We didn't see any of this with the kids when you were teaching. I didn't yeah. see any of them. Yeah. Oh, goodness, you're right. Yeah. Wow. I didn't think about that. Yeah. yeah. It, it was just, yeah, blessed. they were like, it, yeah. they were like it's, waiting for every word that was coming out of your mouth. You know, what was fun. It was fun. Thank you. Thank you. I just, I like, I love what. When guy gets involved, it goes beyond what you would think. And I remember uh, Steve McCurdy, who was teaching with me, too, he was so gracious and honoring and letting me teach with with his with his students. And he said, "No," and, and he let you know they're they're kind of quiet at first. He says, and, "But they're they're going. Their brains are going. They're just a little bit more quiet." I used to like used to when I go to places, they're like interactive and stuff, and they're very quiet at first. It's like, oh my goodness, are they? You know. But uh, what happened was they started getting more and more. You know, animated stuff and after we got off the film set i did a podcast with him just a few weeks ago a couple it's gonna be show, showing a couple weeks but anyway um had them on this podcast and 
they were just talking over each other, just excited about what was happening on the set. And they're just like talking about this. Oh, I remember this. And they're laughing about this and talking about just their experience. And I watched how those students went from that quiet, like taking notes to like just mm -hmm. alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was beautiful yeah. to see that what's okay. happening. So thank you for what you're doing here. You all are launching dreams. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're going with the dream God's given you. And when you do that, you launch dreams for others. Mm -hmm. And I commend you for that. So well, welcome you. on board the dream boat with us. <laughs> <laughs> we are setting sail. I hear you. I hear you. You were a sailor too. So that, that's right. Yeah. Full sail. Well, blessings. All right. Thank you for being here. All right. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Story Chat. If you want to hear more, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions for John or feedback on the show, please email us at storychatwithjohn at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.